Hello, Johnny London here again, and today I want to talk to you about my comms mast. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Hmm, I see. Well, I expect you're wondering how it is that that phone works on my boat. It's clearly a landline style phone. Well, what I've got is a special sort of router. It's an LTE 4G router. It connects to the comms mast, which is what I was just talking to you about, uh, via a couple of wires, actually. It's like a dual aerial kind of thing. And otherwise, apart from that, the router is essentially what you'd recognize as being a normal home router. It's got wireless LAN ports and LAN ports and, you know, all the kind of sockets and bits and stuff that you just have on a normal router. The only difference being is instead of plugging a phone line into it, you plug two aerials into it. So for me, that's a great thing to have. It facilitates all the Wi-Fi around the boat, works very well like that. And of course, being connected to an external aerial, it gives me a much better chance of getting a decent signal because obviously inside the boat, you're shielded by the metal of the boat and also being not only outside but up high on the aerial mast itself that improves my chances of getting past trees and hedgerows and any dips in the valley as it were that you might be in which you usually are when you're in the cut so that works nearly all of the time and um, if I get no signal on my normal handheld mobile phone, I've always got that as a backup. I can usually make a call or receive a call on that. So that's quite a handy thing to have. So I think what we'll do first is we'll go outside and have a quick look at the comms mast. I think I covered it in um, the first episode briefly, but let's have a proper look now. Okay, so out here, you can just see the comms mast behind me. It's not as tall as it normally would be. There used to be a third section and unfortunately that went the way of all things and it's now at the bottom of a lock somewhere. Um, so I've just got the two sections now and at the top you can see the TV aerial. Uh, below that I've got the UHF aerial and below that is that LG ET 4G thing, whatever it is, uh, which does the broadband. Not as tall as it once was, my mast's various aerial cables are wrapped together with some of that cable tidy stuff and into the boat through a waterproof box. A hole in the roof overhang allows for the mast to be close mounted. Okay, so that's the comms mast. Now the next thing is the router itself. So I think what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look at the router and we'll also have a look to see how I've wired the router up to a wall socket, which just adds to the whole aesthetic of the thing. You see, you don't have to have a vintage style telephone. You could have any sort of phone you wanted. You could have um, just a normal base station one, uh, you know, with hands free. But then I think that sort of detracts from the charm of it really, because I like to sit outside on the bow deck of an evening making calls to friends. And when people walk past, they smile because they see me with an old wired telephone on a boat and clearly it's working or or I'm mad um, and it's just working in my head. But in fact, it does work, so that's a good thing. And here's the router. It's branded T-Mobile, but it's unlocked and is actually a Huawei B525S-23A 4G LTE router. All the connections are hidden around the back, including the voltage regulator that comes off the boat's 12 volts. Here, I've unplugged the router for a closer look. We have the two screw-in aerial connections, and below those, there's the usual array of sockets. Power, four of the LAN connections, USB, plus the one on the right, specially for the phone. The cable for the phone goes under the steps, behind bookcases, and into the back of this standard wall socket. From there, it's an ordinary phone cable up to my retro style dial phone. 
And while we're at it, here's the aerial connections for TV and radio and their associated booster. OK, so that's the router and the wall socket for the phone plug covered. Um, there's not too much else to say, really. Uh, I'll just mention uh, the deal that I've got at the moment for my mobile data. I've got a SIM, obviously, in the router, and that is it's a phone SIM, not specifically a data SIM. And that's an important thing, because if you did only have a data SIM, then obviously you'd only get data and you wouldn't get the phone. So to me, it needed to be a phone SIM. They usually have the better deals going anyway, really. And I've got for £20 a month, unlimited data, unlimited calls and unlimited texts. Now, recently that went up to £23 a month. So I will be looking around to see if I can get a better deal, especially as the company I'm with, Three, I do find that their reception is not the best, to be honest. Uh, on occasion, I've had trouble getting the internet, even with the mast. And now that I've changed my sim on my handheld to a different company i think it's uh, virgin which is through ee i'm doing a little bit better with that than i used to so we'll see you know we'll have a shop around and see what i can get but i've been too busy so anyway that about covers it and um, anything i've missed let me know in the comments and i'll try and answer so stay well keep safe and i'll see you soon and here are the costings for the whole lot the TV aerial was $16.95. The radio aerial was £15. And the 4G aerial was £69. The Caramast came in at $25.95. And the aerial booster was £18. The 4G router was $89.95. And the wall socket was £6.99. The retro phone was £10. The grand total came to £251.84. The voltage regulator and various bits of cable I already had, and most of the stuff was purchased around 2018. Coming up in next week's episode. Get yourself sat comfortably for a chat about solar.